In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we leave church today, we sing Hills of the North Rejoice. And of course, we are told to rejoice in the second reading. It is Gay Date at Sunday, meaning rejoice. And of course, his own vestments were all packed up, Stuart would have been in a much lighter shade of purple, known as pink. Advent is a season of preparation, of getting ready to celebrate the joys of Jesus being born. But we are not there yet. Even so, today we are told to rejoice, to take a break from concentrating on the pressures of getting ready. Christmas is not all about happiness for some people. It can be a time of worry and stress for many reasons. Who here ever gets worried, even only sometimes? We all worry about different things. What is worry to feel anxious or troubled? Some children have a soft toy they call a worry monster, which is a monster toy that has a zipped mouth and the child writes down their worries on a bit of paper and puts it in the monster's mouth before bed and then the monster eats it worries away and the next day it is gone from the monster. At this moment of time, moving is on my worry list, hoping that the movers arrive and they pack everything and hoping it goes smoothly and the practicalities will carry on with daily life while the move is going on. Waiting, preparing, getting ready. It all can be too much, but today we are told to take a break and that and to rejoice. So when I, was re- when I was reading and praying on the readings today, the second reading did speak to me because of the do not worry about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request made known to God. It gives us a clue on what we need to do when we are worried. Especially today, we are told to rejoice. Paul teaches us that when we pray, God turns anxiety into peace. I know that prayer is not easy when it comes to the words or time. And it is really hard when we are just caught up in all the worries what's going on in the world and being told not to worry. And that's about the worries of COVID. In this time of Advent, maybe we could review our prayer life and take some time out each day to pray. I know it can be hard to take on prayer, especially if you have difficult things going on, but Paul also knew that prayer can be hard, and I know that too. As we read the passage and apply it, don't forget that Paul wrote his letters from prison. Paul knew what suffering was, he knew the heartache of life, and he knew anxiety. And he knew prayer, how much it is, how important it is, and why he passed this message on to us. Take a break from the worries of preparing for Christmas. Rejoice, pray, trust in God. That there are many ways that we can pray, in silence, like Helen was saying last week, pray together in church, or groups, or just as we are in our homes. Silently, out loud, on our knees, sitting, standing, walking around, hands closed in front of us, arms in the air, and so on. And we should always take our worries, we shouldn't always take our worries to to ourselves, or between ourselves and God. Speak to and pray with others, others you trust, seek help, receive help, offer help. After all, God works through us, each one of us. We have to trust and faith that we can communicate with God and let God into our lives. As we pray and let our worries be taken to God, like the Murray wants to eat in the children's worries. Don't get caught up in the pressures and worries. Rejoice, pray, trust God. Let's learn from Paul that prayer can help and let God into our lives so that we can enjoy the happiness as is approaching and we move through Advent towards Christmas. Amen. <laughs>